Good morning, and welcome to Straight Talking with Kelly, where real conversations happen. This is where you'll meet some of the most intelligent, talented, and creative people who come to share tips, resources, and knowledge on various topics. My guest comes from many industry. Today I have with me Amina Sunshine Gorman. We're going to actually talk about her experience um, as a high school student, a freshman in high school at a boarding school in the Mass Boston, Massachusetts area. So welcome, Miss Amina Sunshine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So Amina, tell me, how what made you want to go to a boarding school? Was this your decision or was it your parents? It was my decision when I was really young. Um, when I was really young, maybe two or three, my dad had a friend who went to boarding school and she had some type of alumni Christmas party of some sort. And we were invited to go. And once we got there, I loved it. And I told my parents, I want to go to boarding school. And we started looking up this school specifically. Uh, and I was just obsessed with it. And then my, my parents were like, you know, of course, of course you can. And, you know, I'm a baby. So they don't really think that anything's going to come out of it. And then eighth grade year, beginning of eighth grade, I'm like, okay, now let's start filling out applications and stuff. And they're like, hold up. Wait, I thought I thought, I thought thought we were joking about that. And we, <laughs> and we weren't. And then that's how it happened. Out. So, and I, from my understanding, I think you applied to several boarding schools. Yes, I applied to nine. To nine. Okay. And you were accepted to practically all of them. I was waitlisted for all of them except for two. Okay. Wow. Waitlisted for all of them except two. And then your top two, you actually got into the one that you, you wanted to get into. Yes. And so this school is called? Phillips Academy. And it's in Andover, Massachusetts. Yes. Okay. So now, what's it like? So before we find out what it's like being on campus, let's talk about the process. So after you, did you have to go through an interview process to get into the school? I did. There was, I had all of my interviews. I had half of them on one day and I had the other half on the other day, back to back. They're about 30 minutes each. And so it was, um, they were all Zoom interviews because, you know, COVID and also because it would be kind of difficult to travel all over to go to each of these schools to right. interview. Um, and actually Andover was my first interview of all my interviews. Okay. Um, so we did, they asked questions and then they asked me if I had any questions. And knowing me, I studied on these schools for hours on end. I wrote out in a notebook Every question I had about their schools, I told them everything that I liked about what they had, anything I was concerned about, and all that stuff. And then I went and asked them the questions at the interview. So it was like I was interviewing them, too. Good for you. So that means you did your research on them as well. Yeah. Because you needed not just them finding out if you were a fit for them, but if they were a fit for you. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And so doing your interview, you said it was over Zoom. Yes. D how was that? Were you nervous? Were you able to say what you needed to say? I was definitely a little nervous, but not to the point where it actually affected how my interview went because all of most of the interviewers were really nice and welcoming and warm. Mm -hmm. And so okay. But at the beginning, of course, you know, they're asking questions. And then later on, it just became more of a conversation back and forth instead of it always being just like an interrogation. It was more mm -hmm. like just getting to know each other. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so now let's move forward. So then after the interview process, did you have to make a trip to come see the school? No, actually. We... um. We, I took my interview in January mm -hmm. and we were supposed to get our, you know, exception or decline March 10th. So it was just a waiting game for two months or so. Uh, and then one night um, I got my first letter and it was a wait list uh, for Miss Porter's 
And I was like, oh my gosh. What was the name of the school? Miss Porter's. Miss Porter's, okay. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not great. If I got declined from this school, I didn't get declined. I got waitlisted. You got but, waitlisted. But I, I was like, I got declined from this school, then I'm going to get declined to all the rest of them. And mom was like, that, that's not how it works. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, hey. So then I'm all the stuff starts coming in and I'm like, I get my Andover exception letter over email and I'm like screaming, jumping up and down, rolling on the floor, everything. And then I get to school and, you know, I'm having a normal school day. And then for some reason, our teachers pull us all, not all, but a large portion of the group out of class because they think that we were like, you know, great students and we were always participating and all that stuff. But they made it seem like we were in trouble. So we were all oh, like okay. really nervous. And they were like, I'm disappointed in you guys. I can't believe you would do this. And then I realized we're walking up to the fourth floor. And I'm like, the fourth floor is where the lunchroom is. What are we doing on the lunchroom floor? And we get up there and they have ice cream for us. And it's a huge ice cream party. <laughs> so at this ice cream party, I'm looking at my phone because, you know, what teenagers do. <laughs> and then I get an email. And it says, you've been accepted into interlocking. So now I'm screaming in the school. And <laughs> everyone's like looking at me weird. And then mom sends me a text of this big box that Andover sent. And it was just filled with stuff. It was filled with like, you know, you've been accepted. And it was, it looked like a diploma. Oh, wow. That was just saying my exception letter. And they were like, we're um, so impressed by your application and all that stuff. And they sent like a little flag that said Andover on it. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so by the time I got home, we were like, okay, we should decide Andover or Interlock. And I was like, Andover. Nice. <laughs> You like that box they sent, huh? Yeah, I, like, I like the box. And that was... That's beautiful. I got it. Now, so, and then your parents, you guys flew out here to see the school, right? Yes, we did. After I got accepted. Okay. We went out because the, like, to accept them, I think it was due. I don't remember when it was due. But you had to eventually accept or decline going to the school. So, to get people to say yes they had revisits so you would go up and you would visit and you would like you know follow someone around so I followed around uh, my student tour guide her name is Angie shout out to Angie I love her <laughs> uh, and she took me to all of her classes she took me to some places that I thought were like super cool like Cam D they had brownies <laughs> and you think that was that like, always worked they had brownies and apple cider and I was like Oh yeah, oh. I'm gonna be here all the time. <laughs> and I got to see how a lot of things worked. And she took me to Graves, even though she didn't really have to go. But Graves is the music building, and she heard that I liked music, so she was like, "I'm gonna take you to Graves." And Graves is really far from where we were, so it was a bit of a trek. It was really cold, but it was definitely worth it to actually see all the stuff that was out in front of the sea. Okay, so now moving forward. So this is, we've gone through the, how you got interested in it, then the application process, and from the application process, the interview. Now the interview, then come in to visit the school, and now you are an official student. So what was that like packing your bags, getting ready to come here? What was that like? I was definitely like my parents are definitely excited, of course, but they were not as excited for me to leave as I was. I started packing my bags uh, in June. <laughs> <laughs> and, and school didn't start until what September? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and you're um, packing and, in June. And my mom is looking and she's like, "What is going on?" So I had um, you actually helped me with this. We had a registry where people um, were able to purchase me things that I needed for school and one of the first things that was purchased were the suitcases it was like four of them and I used those suitcases I used every single one so give suitcases. a shout out to family and friends that supported you shout out to everyone that supported me because there was a lot uh -huh. um and I was just looking at all the stuff that I were thought I needed and I was looking up on YouTube like what do you think I should pack what shouldn't I pack all of that stuff all summer long and slowly putting clothes in I'm like oh this is fall clothing I'm not gonna wear it it's summertime so I'm gonna start putting it in and sooner and sooner comes the deadline to us leaving and the suitcases are getting full and now all of a sudden I have to start doing the like you know the cartoon sit on the suitcase to zip it up <laughs> to close <laughs> <laughs> and mom and dad were looking and like 
the hallway right before the exit is just filled with bags and stuff. And they're like, oh my gosh, she's really leaving. She's really leaving. Uh -huh. And well, then everything is packed and we left. So then you come here, you have your room, you decorate it, and then you have a roommate. So what is that like, having a roommate? Because you are an only child. I am an only child. Shout out to Neka. Love her. She's my roommate. Um, so when we first got to the dorm, because we went through, we did our like sign up for everything, registra registration. Um, and then we got back to the dorm and I got upstairs. We were on the third floor. So making dad work with these suitcases. He was lugging them up the really steep stairs. Mm -hmm. And we get up there and I'm like, oh my God, she's not here yet. So I got first pick. I was so excited about that. Okay. Um, I still I still brag about that to her. Today, yeah. uh, she's, she's like, she's like, why did you get in here first? She's like, next year I'm getting here like three days early. <laughs> so she would have wanted the spot that you have. She probably would have moved around more stuff, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we got up there and we started putting our stuff in, and then she came in, and her little brother came in, and her aunts came in, and her mom came in, and it was the whole it was full. Uh, and we were just packing up all our stuff, talking about, you know, stuff that we want in the room, stuff that we were okay with. Like, we all agreed that we didn't really care about the landline in the room. We didn't really need it. <laughs> okay. So we just tucked it underneath his bed because no one uses that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now tell me about the diversity at the school. Do you feel like, you know, you being African-American that you're really represented at this school? I'd say yes and no. Okay. Because there definitely are Black people, but this also is a very, very much so legacy, white-dominated school. And so you always have to keep that in mind. But we have a lot of resources there for Black students. Like we have the BSU, Black Student Union. <laughs> um, we have CAMD. I do not know what CAMD stands for. They've told us many, many times. And I think diverse maybe is in there. I don't know. Um, but CAMD is a place where people go when they want to be surrounded with people that are like them. Okay. They want to, you know, be able to relate to somebody about something and they go to talk to CAMD about issues oh, they might nice. be having. Okay. Um, we have some CAMD parties and stuff. You know, okay. where they have those brownies and apple cider. <laughs> And you feel really comfortable with all races anyway, because of the way you grew up, yeah. um, you know, um, you definitely are a Chicago baby, mm -hmm. native born. And what was the school that you went to before you graduated for the boarding school? Limbloom. Limbloom. And that was a very diverse school. Yeah. Yeah. So you, this is easy for you to navigate through mm -hmm. all the different cultures and whatnot. So now, what are some of the activities that you're involved in? Now, your background, just for the people that don't know, you were part of the children's choir for how long? For six years. And you sang in several operas, right? Yes. And you are high soprano. You do sing soprano. And so are you singing at all in at Phillips Academy? I am. I am in the chorus, and I'm also in Fidelio. And Fidelio is the part of the chorus that you need to audition for. Um, in a lot of ways, I like saying similar to VOC from Chicago Children's Choir. Uh, and all the people are so nice and also really, really good at singing. They always sound amazing in the chorus and in Fidelio and in all the other choir groups. Mm -hmm. So now tell me about your classes, because I understand you have small amount of students in a class. Like how many students are per class? In my Russian class, I think there might be six of us okay I think six or seven something okay. around that size in my English class 12 in my theater class I'd say maybe 10 in my music class there's 13 of us because I got put in there last minute and they're like it's already full but it's okay we love you anyway. so, we'll so 12 in. is full so they squeezed you in they so 13 me in on okay. that 13th person <laughs> huh um, okay then my biology class, I'd say maybe 12. And then your math class? And then my math class, I'd say 12, 13. Okay. Like okay, so the classes are very small. So you get a lot of individual 
uh, help. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, so do you have a favorite class right now? My favorite class, really hard. Um, <laughs> if it's hard, could you like them all, huh? I'd say maybe I'm gonna rank them because I can. Oh, you okay. can. Are you gonna rank them? I'm gonna rank my top my top ones. Um, okay. I'm gonna say English, and then theater, and then Russian, and then music. Okay, and, and those music. are my top four. Now. I'm on this campus with you, and I understand they have like 500 acres. Is that correct? Yeah, it's like 500, 600, 700. It's around that. It's a lot of it's, acres. It's a lot of acres. And so this walking back and forth. So yeah, I get I get a minimum of 13,000 steps a day. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> wonderful. This wonderful exercise. Yeah. So now, if you, if someone wanted to know what advice would you give them if they're interested in applying to a boarding school what would you say to them i would say that knowledge isn't everything like of course when you're applying they're going to look at your grades they're going to look at you know how you perform in school and you can say you know oh, i do this this academic thing but what they really want to know is what makes you different because they don't want to just accept robots. They want to accept people with personalities, with people who have certain extracurricular activities that they're interested in. Like if you're interested in robotics and you build robots all summer long, tell them that. And they're going to be like, oh, that's that's cool. We have something for you there. And like, you know, you have to be able to show them that you have interests outside of school that will make you a valuable member of their community. And so you singing was your strong suit. Yeah. You know, because you've been in all the different operas and all the different. And they ended up putting me in the dorm right next to Graves. So... Okay. <laughs> and Graves is where the music room. Okay. <laughs> so you, you didn't have to walk that far. You, you don't have to be late. All righty. Um, so I think that was really good advice. And what would you say to parents about letting go and knowing that you're going to be okay on campus? What What is that like? What would you say to the adults? are really really good here um and they're fun to talk to like they're not the kind of adults that you're like yeah, I don't know if I would actually share anything with you like with my house counselors we can spend hours and hours in the common room ranting about one class ranting about a homework assignment she's like well we can work together on that we can like but it's it's never you never feel the need to really like hide away how mm -hmm. you're feeling because you're always around other people who you know are feeling the same way and nice. that you can like communicate with them on that um and the adults around you are also like really helpful with that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so yeah. and then and then you keep in touch with your mom and dad you oh, yeah, talk I to call them. them like every other day yeah yeah because your mom was really like where is my baby she's just going she's <laughs> at the house yeah, so I, I think it's awesome. Um, and then you did mention about the the dorm manager. Is that is that what you call House them? counselor. House counselor. And they're there 24-7, right, for you no. guys. Don't they live in the building with they, you? They do live in the building with us, but they're also teachers. They're Okay, they're teachers too. Um, and so they teach while we're in classes and stuff. But we have a calendar that says who's on duty on what days because we also have um, – dorm compliments and those compliments don't live in the dorm with us but they do come on certain nights so you know one of them is actually a couple people's math teachers oh, okay. okay like she teaches math for some people so whenever she's on duty everyone's like hey help me with this so, math questions <laughs> um, and actually one of our house counselors is also a math teacher so we've got plenty of math help in the house okay that's nice love that yeah and so we're always like you know able to talk to somebody and that's good that uh, what I really like what you said is that because you have the the adults around you and that they are so open and friendly that you're able to express what you're really feeling. You don't have to hide or feel like you don't have anyone to talk to. Yeah. And then even your roommates. And from what I gather, your whole dorm building, you guys really have a connection. Every oh, yeah. I... <laughs> So I, first of all, I have a lot of classes with people in my dorm. So 
I might run upstairs to go in Natasha and Chloe's room and be like, Chloe, oh my gosh, Dr. Kemp just released our grades on this assignment. And then we're working on our revisions on their floor. <laughs> okay. I'm like, they have chairs. I just sit on the floor anyways. Um, or, you know, I'll like on Friday night, I went into Maggie's room and we watched a TV show and it was like an hour long episode. And, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, we just kind of do that. We just go into each other's rooms. We hang out with each other. We hang out in the common room. We bring snacks. There's always snacks in the dorm. I mean, you guys' cafeteria is off the hook. I was, a, you know, your parents were like not feeling it the way I was. I thought the food was phenomenal, fantastic. You know, you guys get hot meals 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, I like our, um, I think Commons is really nice, especially because there's so many options hmm. you have like smoothies and you have the regular coffee machine you've got the espresso bar you've got um fruit although we always have the same fruit it's always cantaloupes and pineapples and honeydew but okay. i love cantaloupes and pineapple and honeydew so you know what you know i'm sure some people are probably like what does she mean they have espresso and coffee she's in ninth grade but ninth graders drink coffee don't they yes and also you know we're not going to admit this, but sometimes you might stay up a little late doing a little, a little homework and a little stand up late doing homework. Yeah, you, need you, need you, need a little, you need a little jolt, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, Amina, I want to thank you for joining me on Straight Talking with Kelly, where real conversations happen. But before we leave, I would like for you to sing a little something for these folks. Just to give them a little taste of your soprano voice. Nope. Okay. I thought, you know, you know, I always try. I always try. So if they want to hear you, they have to go to your YouTube channel, don't yes. they? And what was your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is Amina Sunshine One. Amina Sunshine One. So if you want to hear her sing, you got to go there. Now, Amina, is there anything else you'd like to say to the listening audience before you say you sign off? Go Big Blue. <laughs> all righty so thank you for coming on straight talking with kelly where real conversations happen to my listening audience please subscribe hit that like button and share see you next time